Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Taylor Jones. And do you have any idea what time it is? <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Taylor Jones and welcome back to my YouTube channel, TC Jones Edits. And I know it's been a real long time since I brought you the latest episode of Cold Man's Winter. But for those that are wondering about the last episode, the Black History Month episode, as well as my cover of Sam Cooke's A Change Is Gonna Come, the link for both of those videos will be in the description bar down below. But now I have to continue where I last left off. But this time, welcome to episode 11, when I'm telling you the difference, well, the problem when it comes to dealing with being overly dramatic. Now, when you think of the words overly dramatic, what do you think of, like, what do you see? For instance, the fact that a uh, perfect example, when a guy is so fed up with everything over nothing and people want to scream, shut up this, shut up that. But he's kind of like, like Adolf Hitler. Well, based for those that's watched the uh, biopic about him, um, the movie called Downfall when Adolf Hitler was not pleased with how the war turns out and based on the fact that one of the the Germans were betrayed him like like J Judas betraying Jesus referring to the character Fagelon is you know how seriously amped up Hitler was it's like nobody is trying their very best to uh to get the Germans to to have a powerful war during World War Two at the time because World War One we Americans had had the power and we defeated the Germans but we we Americans still have problems today but not just against other countries ever since Pearl Harbor in which we started nuking down when re in retaliation we had nuclear bombs but we are, we're not even talking about that cuz every now and then ladies and gentlemen we are overly dramatic based on stupid stuff and I'm one of them I get mad over nothing based on how how family how family members see things versus you like you ain't got enough power to the fact that you two are becoming your own version of Tupac Shakur based on the 1995 album he made entitled Me Against the World. And I even remember talking about my cousin-in-law based on the uh, part one, part two, and part three uh, episodes of Cold Man's Winter Betrayal. Mostly parts two and three. But that was until I, re I was told that Whenever I tell a story, I have to keep everybody's name out of my mouth. As in the infamous Will Smith thing. So yes, I was I was I was Will Smith by someone that matters to the fact that I gotta make sure that you know what? Why the heck would I fight over this mess? Because a family figure, a father figure, knows what he expects. And shout out to my dad since I'm bringing that up. Because guess what? If it's going to be, if you're going to talk about a subject, you're going to have to keep it real. But when you're telling a story, you're going to have to base on somebody that you know. But keep them fictional. To lead to an example. Lead to a point. Dude. Why are you still fighting over this? 
And that's one perfect example of being overly dramatic that I have been dealing with throughout my life because you know how people are when they can't can't stand losing, they can't stand failing, but everybody else is mad at them. You're not a team player. You slacked up. You effed up. F this. F that. F you. F him. Blah, blah, blah. Enough with the F bombs. Now that's overly dramatic. Even when they drop the F bomb in the phrase, shut the F up. F bombs, overly dramatic. You cussing over nothing. You become something that you're not. Like one girl gets mad at you for choosing somebody else. So they say they were running running the politician stuff and they were like in they y'all were in your thirties. It's kinda like a girl a girl asked you, like, no. She was like, get the F out. Like like Kate like she went full Kim Fields on Mike Epps for him being disobedient to the fact that after he left Kim Fields' character started crying. And I'm referring to that Netflix comedy series, The Upshaws. To the fact that I had a, had a vision of it. Like, I chose, a, chose my girl, political girlfriend turned ex. Well, ex, I chose her opponent because let's just say that nobody voted for her. I, I voted for her for generosity. Like, somebody has to vote. But everybody is starting to, let's say that everybody started to turn on me for, hey, yo, nigga, why you gotta vote against your girl, man? That's effed up. You gotta get your mind right, nigga. Get about your woman, nigga. Get hit the skins, nigga. That ain't enough. That's what I would tell. Ain't enough. I did this for a reason. The other, the other female politician had no vote. And you, all your niggas everywhere want to talk about, let me smash, please. That's my girl. Well, when, when, well, how come you ain't treating her right? How come you ain't smash? Because I am not willing to smash. I'm not willing to whatever you call cut. I'm not doing it. You got a problem with that? You got a problem with God. Flee fornication. And all that's all y'all niggas do. Y'all lust over my girl. Well, fine. If that's how you want to play, have that chick. And then all of a sudden, after getting kicked out of my girl, my ex-girlfriend's house, like, I had a vision. I even seen it as a movie. A lot of people are concerned about me. Even my family can be concerned. Because when you're overly dramatic after a, after being dumped for voting somebody else than the girl that you loved to having a lot of people get mad at you for not voting your own lady all because somebody else didn't have enough votes. What's the worst thing that can happen? Well, let's just say that John Doe, who got dumped by his political ex-girlfriend, Decide to move to Jackson, live in the projects. One, ex, ex, I mean, see what, what blackness, see the black, the one hundred percent blackness that he missed. Referring to living in the hood, living in the projects where where Negro smoke blunts and women call other girl th other hey other women talking smack about them, calling them thoughts and whatnot, wearing dookie braids. Daisy Dukes, nose ring like mostly the uh, the stud. I'm down with the stud. I am not down with the horseshoes. And I remember, and for those that didn't recall about the horseshoe nose rings, I talked about about that specific body piercing and how it affects a female. And I mean, when it comes to body piercings, like. We're outnumbered. Beauty is dead. And that's what I talked about on season two. And 
for those that's wondering, you might as well, well, check it out for yourself. Remember, Cold Man is one of season two, and the the segment was bodies, and it will be on my YouTube channel, TC Jones Edits on YouTube.com, and back to being overly dramatic, a guy living in the hood or the projects. Trying to see what being black was all about. Surrounded by negative influence. Kids getting in trouble. Like they starting, started getting kicked out of school. Suspended. Even though some of them, some of the kids who got kicked out of school. It actually based on the, the negligence of their parents. To the fact that they started to make a crew. And some, let's say some that John Doe got, I mean, decided to become some that he's not. And what's that? A gang member. He starts to wear the color blue, as in, throw your C's in the air, scream color rib like you just don't care. And if you, and if you slobs want to trip, you're going to get the clips every, you know, that stuff. A guy getting me now. Remember, guy got thrown out of the house, cursed out by his political girlfriend turned ex. A lot of people, a lot of people, got mad at him for voting, voting another female politician that was against his girlfriend. He was told, told you need to hit the skins. You need to get it on. Have sex already for crying out loud. If that's your girl, get involved. You know, but the but the guy's like, he want to say enough. If I get involved, it's gonna to have to be and after I get married. To heck with fornication. To heck with unprotected sex. Even with a condom, it's still wrong against God's eyes. But nobody wants to, to hear that, that wait till marriage crap. So he decides to, to leave his family behind. He felt like his family going to get mad at him for being too generous. Is that what a simp is up to? Is that what leads to being a simp? Is that what leads to what E-40 calls a captain save them though? I said save them though. Why must you save them though? Uh, is the, uh, is the, should I save her? I want to be saved. I was a victim of that and I refused to let that get to me ever again. Lessons learned. But. John Doe turned me turn crip. He started rocking blue bandanas. And let's just say that he rocked a hairstyle that was dead for 70 years, referring to the conch. Like the greasers, but instead he rocks the conch hairstyle like little Richard. James Brown, you know? Riding in a blue six four Impala, the hard top, a hard top coupe of a six four Impala, wow, with hydraulics, as in he's hitting switches like, <laughs> with gold dating rims, just not giving a dang about about what the haters would say. It's kind of like his life was a living nightmare. It was hell on earth for him. Why hell? Because there were so many things he couldn't see in life. Like a wake-up call was not needed yet. Speaking of wake-up calls, I might as well come up with, with an episode. Talk about that for the next episode or the episodes to come. But since spring is coming, I have to... Have to get on a quick start. I got to get back to the basics. But being overly dramatic. John Doe. Who now lives in Jackson. How. First off. How did he end up with a 6 foe Impala. Painted blue. 
with gold dating rims, hydraulics. How do you, how do you afford that? Well, based on the um on the job he works at, to the fact that he don't even know who he is anymore. Everybody, everybody turned their backs on him. To the fact that even though he moved out of his family's home, he still had to had to have the right to go to church. But he still has an ill ill mindset, negative mindset. He's dealing with depression after being dumb to being America's worst nightmare. To the fact that he done turned away from God. Living in the hood, the projects, the the apartment houses where some some spots, some parts looked abandoned because it gives me it, it kind of gives me like a look. Like if I had to compare the apartment house and how it looks like, compare that I compare it to the apartment houses that used to be on the corners of North McKinley and West Bradley Avenue in Champaign, Illinois. I mean, that's how that's how that's how hood, how project, how black the uh, neighborhood was. But instead, every now and then, police drive by to see what the neighborhood was like. And when they spotted John Doe, who is now a so-called crypt, throwing his seeds in the air, trying to find I me, mean, trying to find the real meaning of being black. Well, he's been acting acting so weird, so self-centered, so guilty. That he don't even know when to when to admit he was wrong. And even the people that turned out to look at him strange, like, why is he now why is he cripping? I mean, what what said he claimed he from? But then someone realized that, oh shoot, that's the guy that decided to leave his hometown after being being called out for Voting for a politician who was actually in Jackson. Like she was a red bone. I mean, a light skin. Made me think of one of the sweet ladies of the week that I called out. Because I picture her as a politician. Nobody cared about her. But John Doe that voted for her did. I mean... He was doing it in generosity, but generosity kills the cat. That's what people believe. And that made him so overly dramatic. He's like, screw my hometown. Screw them. But still, how come he came back? Because his church. His church, the Church of Christ, that that's that's what his religion, Church of Christ. He went to the Church of Christ to Get close to his family. And even though people started looking at him, his congregation looked at him like, what in the world? And even the minister, he was surprised to see him. But John Doe was like mad, like, I'm listening. Let's he let, let keep let's hear this. I'm ready to hear what you gotta say. Don't let my my looks fool you. Heck, he wouldn't even say hello to his mom and dad. He just walks in and then bounce after the ser sermon was over. But instead, he walks out the side doors. He walks in the entrance where he always gets checked because COVID-19 is still, still a heck of a killer. And to the World Health Organization, I say this. At some point, you individuals from the WHO organization, the World Health Organization, is are going to tell us what exactly caused coronavirus. Because right now, 
is three years old and unidentified. But the madness must die down. Unless coronavirus will be the new flu, according to some, some sources. It's going to take time. So, every Sunday. Now, three weeks. He's been in Jackson for three weeks. John Doe has. He never even said hello to his mother. He never shook hands with anybody after the service. He just went back to Jackson. But let's just say that after three weeks, everybody started to have enough, had enough about his silence. And he's still getting up, still felt out of place because of his ex-girlfriend. His ex-girlfriend won the won the uh, so-called competition against the Jackson female politician. And as as he was the so-called crip that he was, he decided to find every poster of his ex-girlfriend and and write the word sitch. What is, sitch? I don't think that's a word, Taylor. Well, if you for those that's wondering, Lilo and Stitch, well, let's just say that the way he spelled I mean, it's kind of like he's spelling, like he wrote stitch, but instead, there's no T between the S and the I. So that's how the word sitch was made. But instead of S-I-T-C-H, he just wrote C. He even, he even put, I mean, he even created the letter C where, how the Crips throw, throw their C's up. C-I-T-C-H. Because as an as an individual, a crip individual, they are not supposed to say anything that starts with the letter B. So it's kind of like he's called John Doe is calling his ex girlfriend, a politician, the B word. But since he was starting to act like a crip, he didn't even give a dang about her. Heck, but back and forth, it's like, he's quiet, he's out the public, but all of a sudden, after a month, Mr. Overly Dramatic turned crip over nothing, he started getting interviews, and, and he was talking hard to all the people that asked questions, man, back the heck up, you don't need no information, she's a jerk. Who cares a dang about what my ex thinks? So what if I chose me? And you saying generosity killed a cat? Then the heck with all y'all. Shame on y'all too. Shut up the cameras. Shut up the lies. Stop chosen over my ex girlfriend. Heck, she's not. She ain't nothing to play with. But she's gonna have her come up and soon. He was dissing her too. I mean, he had it coming, but. He was tired of feeling hurt, but he couldn't be silenced. He done took all the shut-ups in his lifetime that he could stand. He started to act grown, but he doing it in the wrong way. He living in the hood. He drives a 6 foot. He's throwing, I mean, he's screaming, come rip, on a daily. Friday is a special day when he just... Like to ride around the hood. I mean around the neighborhood. Around the city. Because he feel free. Just showing off. Hitting switches. Hydraulics. Not giving a dang about his girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend. And even. Trying to keep himself above high, high water. Because everybody want to drown him. All the people, all the thugs that lusted over his ex-girlfriend, getting mad at him, telling me he needs to, to have sex right here, right now. They like, you know what? We got to we gotta talk to, to her. So let's just say that the thugs decided to talk to her. The people that lusted over John Doe's girlfriend. 
And let's just say that she had a plan to get him back after that incident with the media press. Like one day around the around the neighborhood. And one neighborhood I could think of is where um, the laundromat was at, followed by a beauty store on the other side and a gas station. He actually pumped up his gas. Pumped up his gas. And he was about to leave when he turned on the ignition. And the guys and the thugs, the thugs that that was part of his ex-girlfriend, John Doe's ex-girlfriend's plan, let's just say that uh they they actually s snuck in. They got in John Doe 6-4. And he just got out. Because, and he just got out of the hop, out the uh, so-called gas station. After paying for paying for his gas like pump one and he paid thirty dollars and when he got out he spotted his six fold in the red turn in the red light and he it was like it was about to go to the neighborhood where um where you where they were about to head to there's a there's a red light and you drive by the Drive past the uh, the lane, the old lane campus uh, pool. Shout out to Jackson, Jackson, Tennessee, by the way. And they let's say they were about to head to Dollar General on the other side, as if they were about to head to the neighborhood where the call, you know, where the uh, city court is at, right? Like where the net is. I mean, the Ned and the old Greyhound station in Jackson. John Doe, he spotted what happened and he started, hey, hey, double crosses. And he's just running, running. And the car just turned to the, turned to the light. Oh, crap. And, and while the car was, car was stolen, John Doe was not going to give up the fight until once the thugs decided in riding shotgun, he he had a he had a nine millimeter gat in his pants. He took it out and rolled the window down. I mean, he left. I mean, he left fake crip. Oh no! Yeah, John Doe reacted like, oh no! And then bam, gunshot was heard. John Doe knew he had to ref had to uh. Do a reflex like the Matrix. Mm. But instead, he actually played dead. And the bullet actually missed him. So he played dead. And let's just say that somebody spotted the whole thing. And it was the female politician who lost against John Doe's ex-girlfriend. And she actually pulled up. Like, she probably figured out the plan after spotting what she did. So she drove up in the 1984 Cadillac DeVille, D-E-Ville, box caddy. And she's dressed in red because after she lost, she got over... She got depressed to the fact that, you know what? Is this how people, is this what I get in return? She started to act like a blood, more like a bloodlet. And the guy and the thugs who stole John's 6-4, they spot, oh, crap. <laughs> and the and politicians were like, Going somewhere, thieves, thieves. Oh, shoot, yo, yo, return. I mean, 
turn around, turn around. Yeah, and they were trying to, t and while he was turning around, a couple cops actually were there, there at the spot, like, and dig this. Not even one dent, one bump, one crash to ruin the 6 4 has been, uh, has been involved because the police actually stopped them with the help of the female politician who lost towards John Do Doe's ex. They spotted everything and they. And the thugs got arrested with murder. I mean, for a carjacking, followed by an attempt of murder. Although John Doe, the so-called crimp, was alive, he faked he faked dying. I mean, he played dead. He faked his death. But when he woke up and heard, but he woke up and he heard the uh, so-called police sirens, like, <gasps> and he got up and he ran. Ran to his car. Car. And even the the politician wanted to talk to him, but he just he just bounced. So it's kind of like round one. It it was like he started to see where things went wrong, but then. One another day happened. Another day later. Sunday, he goes to church at his hometown. And after after another another sermon was over, after a morning Sunday morning service was over, he leaves from the side door. Still still never said a word to his family. Never shook hands. Well, bump knuckles. He just drove straight back to the to Jackson, and let's just say that the police officer, some police from his hometown, spotted his movement in that box in the six four Chevy. If they followed him to his apartment house in Jackson, and they, but they didn't. They didn't blow their cover. Well, actually, they didn't want want him to see them. And I wonder why. And everybody else from the apartments, they spotted the police as in, oh, no. Because one, one plan... One, like, the police were actually, from his hometown, they were actually worried about him. But let's just say that the, uh, that the police officers in Jackson spot, I mean, were, saw him, he saw him different. Well, actually, then again, okay, John Doe's hometown police, police actually followed him and I wonder why everybody spotted what happened what went down and even the police officers in Jackson that drove by the apartments they actually were wondering what is John Doe's hometown police officers doing in Jackson and they probably were thinking that there was a that the new guy, the so-called Crip, had disturbed the peace or caused some mayhem. But the Jackson police officers found out that while John Doe was eating his lunch, like he got some got some chicken. He got some chicken, a, a chicken, a Sunday chicken meal. Uh, a, a thigh with a breast, baked beans and green green beans, baked beans and green beans, 
potato wedges, and some tea. And after he got finished eating his l Sunday lunch, it happened. Police, open up! And since it was Sunday, he had the right to to give in. I mean, he was he's been dressed in blue. He was acting like a crip. And it's been a month now. Not only that, he got arrested for nothing. Now the police are overly dramatic over what, over John Doe. John Doe had to be sent to Jackson Police Department. They put him in a cell. But Jackson Police Department were concerned like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What the heck is this? What the heck is going on? I mean, what did John Doe do? Well, and the so-called police officers from John Doe's hometown decided to tell him that he had a warrant. <coughs> oh, no. <clears throat> but based on being dissed, I mean, based on him dissing his politician's political girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, she took it to, a, to an offense that the first time... She had some thugs to lock, to steal his car, and even if he ran, kill him. But that failed. And then, all of a sudden, based on the same thing, the, the same diss that he threw at her, he decided to, um, uh, she decided to get him arrested. Make him suffer. Because she was so overly dramatic that she started to act like a, like a Karen. Like, more like a Candace Owens. That people question her blackness her, themselves. Everybody in Jackson questioned, questioned John Doe's ex. Has she gone off the dang boarding? Board? Has she gone overly dramatic? Yes, she has. And the police officers had a little, little confrontation with each other. And the Jackson Police Department find it some completely idiotic. So what? That's not enough proof. Now, if I were you, I would go back to where I came from, and but first, you're gonna have to uh, have to get John Doe out of that jail cell. You did this, but we don't play play around in Jackson, Tennessee. We don't play around here. But then again. With the help of the, with the mindset of how the Jacksonians were dealing dealing with with the with the redundancy of John Doe's hometown police department, and I never even mentioned the city. They knew that the so-called Political nonsense, political interview. I mean, the diss was overly dramatic, but he had the right to say something. Freedom of speech. So, what did John Doe do while sitting in a cell? Well, let's say that he actually sung He'll Understand and Say Well Done by the Soul Stirs. And while, but he probably remembered that based on, on the old, old show, TV Gospel Tom from the 60s, that his great-grandmother used to watch when, yeah, and 
it was like back when Mighty Claws of Joy, the Soul Stirrers, the Harmonizing Four, the Caravans, they were starting, they were taking over the gospel show every Sunday morning until Jubilee Showcase continued where TV Gospel Time left off. But TV Gospel Time was only for four years. Jubilee Showcase, that was until the 80s. But things changed. And after, after getting released from jail, more media came in to play. And yes, he was like, you know, he was calm now because it was Sunday. And it was like, he's still saying, this is ridiculous. Well, she don't know better. She's still amped up about me dissing her. I'm had enough. Shoot. She's responsible for the last incident where I nearly got shot at to death. I nearly got killed, but they, but by them thugs that robbed my car. She just wanted to teach me a lesson and see if I can make it, make it through. But she's not God. But then all of a sudden, let's just see that the politician board looked up her, her background. And based on what they, they found, it was like, unbelievable. So the ex-girlfriend turned politician, overly dramatic over nothing. That was strike two. She failed. The Jacksonians had John Doe's back. But for real. An ordinary Monday. The politician that lost and gone overly dramatic to the fact that she became a bloodlet over nothing, throwing her bees in the air, or, or Pyru, like, dripping blood, like, and screaming, so woo, you know what I'm saying? Two individuals don't, don't, don't love what, what they've been up against. Got so mad, frustrated to the fact that they became gang members over nothing. But when the politician turned bloodlet visited John Doe, turned Crip, they actually got along with each other. But when they op when the oak door was open. John Doe? Yeah, and who are you? You probably remember me from uh, the time when you when you actually played dead when your car got robbed and got jacked. It's like, wait a minute. You're the one that I voted. And because of how he reacted, like, oh, man, what have I done? She wanted to ask the same question about herself. That she hugged him. Fifteen seconds. And after that, they, un they stopped hugging and she walked in and closed and they closed and he closed the door and they talked. Her caddy was parked by his 6'4", his Impala. And they actually started to, to expect better for each other. And this is what they did. While they were hanging out together, they actually found the posters with John Doe's ex. They, the one that they vandalized. Blood and Crip style. They actually got rid of him. 
and they act afterwards they tr they were treated to a dinner and what better way to spend quality time well actually lunch time than at a hibachi <clears throat> at a hibachi they started to take take their their day seriously that they started to fall fall too quickly in love but based on generosity John Doe started to get his confidence back and be less of a jerk and things went well they exchanged strange digits But Tuesday, the very next day, after the politician that lost against Joe, John's ex got along with John Doe in person, one female uh, uh, media I mean, journalist actually wanted to, uh, to put... I mean, just spend quality time, like, make an interview with, with John Doe, who turned Crip. And he was eligible. He was calm. He started calming down. He started feeling more generous. And it actually made the, the big news, the 10 o'clock or 6 to 10 o'clock news. He was the top story. And based on what he had to deal with as while living in Jackson, Tennessee, he actually became like somewhat of a of an icon, someone that he can look up to. John Doe, after dealing with being locked up for no reason and getting robbed when it had something to do with his ex girlfriend current politician that the committee actually were pleased to see what the journalist did for John Doe. But Wednesday he decided enough is enough and he called his mom and dad let them know that things haven't been going his way and Thursday, Thursday was just different. So Thursday, he headed straight to, like, let's say he had, on Thursday, he, he headed to Memphis to go skating. It was kind of like heading to Atlanta to find the Cascade skating rink. But there was an all-black skating rink in Memphis. And he actually had the time of his life. Like, he was peaceful. But he was still rocking the conch hairstyle. Over a month. And even the females find him attractive. And they even comfort him. Comfort him. They they took selfies with him, and and the fellas gave him mad love too. But he had to tell the truth. John Doe told the truth that he's not really a crip. He was just mad over nothing, overly dramatic after a breakup, and being looked upon like a fool for choosing somebody else who had no votes at all. I told him that at first I believed that generosity is what killed the cat. But sometimes generosity can help you overcome your guilt. It's like a fight of his life. But then all of a sudden, after the East End, like after it was closing down around, let's say around 8-ish eight, or I mean what, 9 o'clock on a Thursday night. He hit the freeway, but instead, 
Like, he left from exit 8 to Sam Cooper Boulevard. And he drove all the way to, I think, exit 18. Driving in the dark. Traffic lights were on. But he still maintained the speed limits. Drove five over on the on the fast lane, but the but the streets were so quiet. He tr he traveled all the way to Bolivar. Stopped at a local McDonald's. Grabbed himself self some food and then all of a sudden you just continue to travel back back to Jackson head home and then Friday all heck or hell is about to break loose all hell is about to break loose when his ex-girlfriend appeared in Jackson Tennessee at his apartment house. Unfortunately, what she did, the idiot, the two term and hood rat, she actually had mo thugs that talk crap about John Doe. Like some of the thugs, the first set of thugs, they got arrested. Now, Instead, but instead of driving stealing his six four, let's just say that he fired. They fired some shots at his house. Brrr. Oh, I mean, you can run, but you can't hide forever, John Doe. I want to see you right here, right now. Oh, she was ready to get revenge, and she was overly dramatic. All because she was already at strike two. But now she want to put, put a third attempt to make a fool out of John Doe in effect. But what she didn't know was that John Doe was not inside the apartment house. And, and because the door was unlocked, well... Let's just say that they all walked in. And they were trying to find out if he was inside. So they checked his room. Check the bathroom. Check the closet. Go check the closet, man. You know, like. But the girl, the politician, she found a nut me, found her rival's phone number. She thought that she was that John was cheating on her, but if you recall, she was the one that kicked John out of her house. She dumped him for disobedience. Oh. But all of a sudden, she decided, you know, hey, yo, change of plans. He's not, since he's not here, we're going to have to, have to, to find out, find where he's at. Well, so where was John? I mean, he left the door open. Because it was kind of like he had a trap. But dig this. The trap was set up to distract the politician. But while they were getting in the car and getting ready to leave to find John. Let's just say that John was actually inside the car. And he was dressed up. Dressed up like a crip. Bumping nationwide rip ride rip riders. Just bumping nationwide rip riders. 
the album, except for the last track, Bullets Don't Have No Name, is like, that song was more like singing. It's like, he find that boring. Uh, uh, what? What? Uh, yeah. Uh, what they didn't know is that the doors were locked. But of course, John wasn't stupid. He was just, just chilling. And he was actually behind, like in the back. Like, let's say they, that she drove a 1996 GMC Suburban. It was black. Because you know how politicians ride in black cars, black SUVs. But they ain't got no bodyguards. You just got the thugs rolling. And when they were rolling... Roland, let's just say that let's just say that um, John Doe had had another I mean, like a walkie-talkie. Okay, walkie-talkie, and or tape recorder. And they actually, he recorded what the whole, uh, whole plan was when it came to finding John Doe. He had it recorded. The fact that the rival politician heard it. Followed by the Jackson Police Department hearing what, what they had, or they planned to do to John Doe. And even the the po political committee, politician committee, heard everything that Harry that they were talking about. To the fact that while they were heading to Walmart Van Drive for a morning morning shopping, no, never mind. They were actually. Just riding around Jackson on a Friday morning. And what they did know is that everybody started looking at him like, oh, that's that two timer that John Doe was, was hurt over. Yo. And while everybody was minding their business, Without them being spotted at Walmart, they got what they they have, and the cashiers are like, like they they decided to play it safe, like a normal routine. And after they left, they like, all right, hey, the police, I think that's them. Because guess what? He had the whole, John Doe had a plan to let the whole Jacksonians hear what went down. Because this was like the last shot. Strike one. Strike two. But now strike three. And while they were getting ready to, uh, Head to their their place. Like nothing happened, nothing. But when they arrived at their place, a lot of police cars, including the I mean, including the individuals who uh were living right by right by John Doe and the PC political committee they they spotted their return to try to find John Doe once again and then it happened phone call phone call from uh the ex the rival politician
And yo, who the heck is this? Remember me? Oh, what are you calling me for? Oh, let's just say that you got busted. Busted? How? Oh. And then all of a sudden, John Doe screamed out and said, What's up? Oh, shoot. Get him. And before they even pulled the trigger on John Doe, the thugs did. The police pulled their gun on him. Don't you dare move. Uh, ma'am, are you the one that that won the politician? Yes. Well, it turns out that, uh, you, based on what, what you've been up to lately, you're disqualified. What? Because of, because of how karma t took place, how the tables turned, and even the so-called in journalist who interviewed John Doe on Tuesday, she finally was spotted everything. She actually made another top story, and everybody who lived at the apartment houses right by and next to at the neighborhood where John Doe moved to the hood slash projects. They were pleased that uh, John Doe's ex-girlfriend is disqualified. And she also was charged for, for an attempted murder as in plot. Plot contrivancy. I don't. I don't know that if that's a word. Plot, plots and plans to ruin John Doe's legacy, life, and even kill him. For it's one, two. This was her third strike, and she got to serve life behind bars. Well, not life, but the she along with the other thugs. They were tried. Found guilty, and they all had to serve, all men had to serve 10 years while his ex girl, John Doe's ex girlfriend, and now ex politician who got disqualified by the political committee, she has to serve 18 years. 18. Seven years. Before 25 to life. And she get obligation, free obligation of parole after doing two thirds of the of the sentence, which is 12 years, 12 years of parole. Out of 18, 18 years. And. All of a sudden, pol the, poli the the rival politician, the bloodlet, she actually kissed John Doe on the lips. And things started to go smoothly. But, Sunday, at church service, he came early and the and the politician, rival politician turned girlfriend, she actually was pleased to stand, I mean, to sit with John Doe. And John Doe finally repented his sins and pray, want the church to pray for him that he makes better decisions and to overcome his shortcomings in life. And that's what he did. John Doe still driving his six foe with hydraulics and Dayton rims. His Chevrolet Impala. The hardtop coupe. Wow. Miss um, Rival. I mean, rival politician. Who was a blood? Who dressed up like a bloodlet? She she drove her 1984 Cadillac Deville, 
And they were pleased. Everybody was proud proud of John Doe to finally overcome his shortcomings and speak out and change his ways. To the fact that after after church service, some individuals shook hands and bumped knuckles. Others were COVID-19 aware. And others, they just gave him a hug. His mom and dad were so proud that his mother was bursting in tears. And his father was like, God bless you, son. So glad that you finally speak out again. Although, short his stay in Jackson at the uh, at the so-called projects, there was a there was a letter based on the uh, political committee committee, the journalist who interviewed him, as well as the Jackson Police Department, saying that he no longer lives here. But that, but, but that was Monday. This is Monday. But I have to keep going with Sunday. Because Sunday, after coming home to Jackson. From church. From his hometown. He decided to get rid of his. His crip. His so-called crip. Crip materials. But he had to wait till the sun went down. 8 o'clock, 8 p.m., the sun went down. A little bit of the sky was showing blue. He started to light up. He started to find a trash, I mean, a garbage can where it was all, all old. He light up, he light up a match and watched his blue, I mean, blue objects, I mean, his blue Crip materials, including his bandana, cut me burning flames. And while the while he did that, he actually had some s'mores. But then, a lot of individuals crowded by him, and they had s'mores along with him. And also, one of the neighbors, one of the one of the neighbors decided. To cut his conch hairstyle off. Like he finally got a haircut. John Doe. Finally found his groove back. His Finally found his true persona. And realized that. the Being black. Was all just a joke. But at the same time. He knew that. Sometimes being black is like. You got to be your true self. That's what God wanted for him. It was a test. And he finally found out the hardest way. He nearly got shot to death. He got locked up, but like a Christian, he had to had to keep keep the peace. He finally repented of his sins. He finally got rid of his crip mentality. So he's no longer throwing up seeds. He's starting to believe in the Lord. He's starting to Get on the right path. Now that his ex-girlfriend is out of his life. Riding behind bars. And being guilty for being disqualified. They decided to switch. The the politician that became a bloodlet Over nothing. To being. The winner. And that is when things started to go from. Bad. To good. And she did the same thing. She got rid of all of her bloodlet mentality. All the red bandanas. She stopped screaming Sue Wu and, and said, Thank the Lord for a blessed moment. She started counting her blessings. She's the politician now. And John Doe stood by her side. But Monday, back to Monday, the very next day, John Doe was told he was no longer living here because he found he he has been assigned to a new new house, a new new home to live. 
And guess what? He lives next door to the politician. To the fact that six months later, after dating, John Doe finally popped the question to the politician replacement. She said yes. And the city of Jackson was pleased. And the marriage at the Carl Perkins Civic Center was amazing. Wait, they got married at the Carl Perkins Civic Center? Yes. Where, how, how else could that happen? Everybody was pleased from John Doe's parents to the, the individuals that lived in the hood slash projects. Because they came too. Like, invited guests. And because of John Doe, some of them turned their lives around. Even the little kids who were mistreated and looked upon like thugs in school. They decided to grow up. Some of them even went... Went to college. Some were teenagers. They went to college because of John Doe. They were in the uh, honor roll because of John Doe. And how he finally tricked his ex-girlfriend. And the thugs that, that talk crap about him, they had to shut up for real because they locked up. Or it's one, two, three strikes, you're out. We got a new politician. And all's well ends well for John Doe. Because he stopped being overly dramatic and started being more confident, more patient, more thankful to make another day go by smoothly. And now that he's in love with the politician that was once defeated, causing her to gang bang over nothing. They found love. But the question is, what are they going to do with it? They're going to make it grow. Now that they found love, what are they going to do with it? They're going to make it grow. That's how it goes. Because when you're overly dramatic, you got to think. Where do I end up? Do I end up homeless? Do I end up locked up? Do I end up leaving the town even when I'm banned? Like Ray Charles was banned from Georgia. To having a apology nearly 20 years later in his career. And being welcomed back home to Georgia. And having one of his songs, Georgia On My Mind, becoming the... National anthem for the state of Georgia. Or will you end up dead? Because being overly dramatic, it leads to a lot of things. Negativeness, negative ways of thinking. And I had to learn that the hard way, and I still have to learn that. Because I am not 100% perfect. I'm not ready to accept it. It's all tough love again. It's all hardships. Even when you claim you're not black enough, it doesn't matter. But what matters is that you got to thank God for leading you this far. And you cannot let him go. That's what a lot of people are overly dramatic for. They don't know when to put God first. They don't know when to accept their faith. They don't know when to accept responsibilities. But we can change all that around and... And see things clearly in the blink of an eye. That's how it works. Overcome oh, being oh, blah. Overcome your issues of being overly dramatic. Mad over nothing. Guilty to the fact that you become something that you're not. Kill that vibe. That's the vibe I want to kill. But I don't want my own vibes to be killed because of what I did. To the fact that I'm cursing like a sailor and 
thinking about this and mom and dad and everybody who talk crap about me. No, no, that's overly dramatic. But living in the past, overly dramatic. You can't fix the past. You can't fix things. So live for today. Live for tomorrow. Live for the future. Until the day that you can't even speak anymore. You can't even walk, talk. Because death is frequent. But we never know when our time is, time is up. Only God knows. So learn how to be calm. Don't be overly dramatic. And that's the way it's supposed to be from now on. With all that being said, this is yours truly, Taylor Jones, saying thank you very, very much for spending your quality time an hour with me as I break down a new segment, a new topic for Cold Man's Winter after being gone for a couple of weeks, but I have to finish up what I started. Time, time flying, and all we have to do is fix our fix our ways. And if you like what you're hearing, feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the notification bell, and there will be more in stores. Not only that, make sure to check out the links between Cold Man's Winter Episode 10 Black History Month Special and my cover of Sam Cooke's A Change Is Gonna Come. Both links will be in the description box down below. And also, this episode is dedicated to none other than the memory of Lydia Heron. And to top it all off, what's the point of closing Cold Man's Winter without mentioning this week's Sweet Lady of the Week? And for this week, this week's sweet lady of the week, I, I decided to give recognition because she was once a good employee. I mean, she was once my co-worker and I feel like I have been a good mentor to her because I'm looked upon like a father figure, an older brother, because I give her some some advice, like mentor a lot of people. That's what we ought to do. So this episode, this sweet lady of the week is none other than Jayla Muriel. And to Jayla Muriel, I miss I miss you and I wish things were, were going well with you because I never forgot about you. And this is this is a real deal. Because a lot of people need recognition, especially a, especially a female who has been looked upon and ignored on a daily basis. But it's time to share light on her, on a special she. And with all that being said, thank you for watching for real. I mean that. Thank you very much for watching a somewhat comeback after a few days, a few weeks. And stay tuned for more Cold Man's Winter Season 4. With all that being said, this is yours truly, Taylor Jones, signing out.